Enjoy this narrated virtual tour of pursued aircraft displayed at the National Museum of the United States Air Force. It is located on the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Southwest Ohio. See the technological progression that resulted in aircraft that controlled the sky above European and the Pacific theaters during World War II. It opens with the U.S. Air Service's Lusatch 11 and covers other aircraft through the cancelled Fisher P-75 Eagle. The Lusatch 11 was designed by a French aeronautical engineer working for the U.S. government in an effort to get an American fighter into World War I. It was a well-designed fighter but did not get into Europe until after the armistice. Only 28 production aircraft were built and were flown by the air service with one setting a number of altitude records in the early 20s. The aircraft on display is the only Lusatch 11 in existence. Curtis P-6E Hawks served between 1932 and 1937 with the 1st Pursuit Group at Selfridge in Michigan, and with the 8th Pursuit Group at Langley Field in Virginia. Numerous accidents claimed at least 27 of the 46 Hawks, but it is recognized as one of the most beautiful aircraft of the 30s. This is the only P-6E still in existence. Boeing developed the P-12 at its own expense and it was one of the most successful American fighters between the world wars. P-12s were the last of the biplane fighters flown by the Army, with some P-12s remaining in service with first-line pursuit groups until replaced by Boeing P-26s in 1934 and 1935. Survivors were relegated to training duties until 1941. The displayed aircraft served with the 6th Pursuit Squadron in Hawaii during the 30s. Boeing's P-26A was the Army Air Corps' first all-metal monoplane fighter in regular service, and was affectionately nicknamed the P-Shooter by its pilots. It could fly much faster in level flight than the older wood and fabric biplane fighters. Even with its monoplane design and all-metal construction, the P-Shooter retained traditional features such as an open cockpit, fixed landing gear and external wing bracing. They remained the Air Corps frontline fighter until 1938. This P-26A reproduction is painted to represent the commander's aircraft of the 19th Pursuit Squadron, 18th Pursuit Group. Seversky's P-35 was the Army Air Corps' first production single-seat all-metal pursuit plane with retractable landing gear and an enclosed cockpit. 60 P-35s were assigned to pursuit squadrons in the Philippines, but they were all lost in action early in the war. Ironically, the Japanese Navy ordered two seat versions of the P 35 in 1938, and these became the only American built planes used operationally by the Japanese during World War II. The displayed aircraft is the only known surviving P 35. The P 36 was developed from the Curtis Hawk Model 75. At the start of World War II, the outmoded P 36 was relegated to training and courier duties within the United States. The aircraft on display is the first P-36A delivered to the Air Corps. The diorama honors Lt. Philip Rasmussen who flew in his pajamas during the raid on Pearl Harbor, shot down a Japanese plane and landed his plane without brakes, rudder or tailwheel, and with more than 500 bullet holes in the aircraft. Lockheed's P-38 Lightning's first large-scale service was during the North African Campaign in November 1942, where the German pilots named it the Forked Tail Devil. When it began combat operations from England, it was the only fighter with the range to escort bombers into Germany. It really shined in the Pacific, where seven of the top eight aces flew the lightning. The P-38L on display is painted as a P-38J with the 55th Fighter Squadron based in England. The top hats on the left side of the aircraft represent the nine bomber escort missions flown by its pilot, 2nd Lieutenant Royal D. Frey, with the yellow hat signifying five and the white hats one each. Bell's P-39 Aracobra was one of America's first-line pursuit planes in December 1941. It had a 37mm cannon that shot through the propeller hub, but to make that work, the engine was mounted behind the pilot. Since it did not have a turbocharger, its performance was limited to about 17,000 feet. It saw combat throughout the world, particularly in the Southwest Pacific, Mediterranean and Russian theaters. Over 4,700 were sent to the Soviet Union through Lend-Lease, where Russian pilots appreciated the cannon-armed P-39 for its ground attack capability. 
This Era Cobra is painted as a P-39D flown in the 57th Fighter Squadron in Adak Island during the Aleutians campaign. Curtis's P-40 Warhawk was the United States' best fighter available in large numbers when World War II began. Though often slower and less maneuverable than its adversaries, it earned a reputation in battle for extreme ruggedness. Warhawks engaged Japanese aircraft at Pearl Harbor and in the Philippines in December 1941. They also served with the famed Flying Tigers in China in 1942, and in North Africa in 1943 with the 99th Fighter Squadron, the first African-American U.S. fighter unit. The displayed aircraft is painted to represent the Warhawk flown by then-Colonel Bruce Holloway, a pilot in both the Flying Tigers and its successor, Army Air Force's 23rd Fighter Group. Produced in larger numbers than any other U.S. fighter, the Republic P-47 Thunderbolt, affectionately nicknamed the Jug, served as a bomber escort and as a very effective ground attack fighter. Its sturdy construction and air-cooled radial engine enabled the Thunderbolt to absorb severe battle damage and keep flying. Through 1943 in Europe, the P-47 equipped the majority of 8th Air Force fighter groups in England as a long-range escort fighter. The rugged and heavily armed P-47D proved to be ideal for ground attack and it became the backbone of the fighter-bomber force in the 9th Air Force in Western Europe and the 12th Air Force in Southern Europe. The P-47D Razorback Thunderbolt on display is an early version of the D, nicknamed for the ridge behind the cockpit. The most visible change during the P-47D production run was the new bubble-top canopy, which provided much better all-around vision for the pilot. North American's P-51 Mustang was among the best and most well-known fighters used by the U.S. Army Air Force during World War II. Mustangs arrived in quantity in Europe in the spring of 1944, becoming the primary long-range escort fighter. The versatile Mustang also served as a fighter-bomber and reconnaissance aircraft. Few Luftwaffe aircraft could match the P-51D. By the end of the war, they destroyed 4,950 enemy aircraft in the air more than any other U.S. fighter in Europe. Mustangs arrived in the Pacific and China-Burma-India theaters by the end of 1944. In the spring of 1945, Iwo Jima-based Mustangs started flying long-range B-29 escort and low-level fighter-bomber missions against ground targets in Japan. They served in nearly every combat zone during World War II and later fought in the Korean War. The displayed Mustang is painted as the P-51D flown by Colonel C. L. Sluter, commander of the 325th Fighter Group in Italy in 1944. Designed and built in great secrecy during World War II, the Bell P-59 Era Comet was America's first jet aircraft. Era Comets were assigned to the 412th Fighter Group to familiarize pilots with the handling and performance characteristics of jet aircraft. Although its performance was not spectacular and it never saw combat, the Era Comet provided training for Air Force personnel and invaluable data for the development of higher performance jet aircraft. The heavily armed Northrop P 61 Black Widow was the United States' first aircraft specifically designed as a night fighter. It carried radar equipment that enabled its crew to locate enemy aircraft in total darkness and fly into proper attack position. The Black Widow flew its first operational night fighter intercept mission in Europe and later was also used as a night intruder over enemy territory. As Black Widows became available, they replaced interim Douglas P-70s and Bristol Bowfighters in all U.S. night fighter squadrons. This aircraft is painted and marked as a P-61B assigned to the 550th Night Fighter Squadron serving in the Pacific in 1945. The Fisher Body Division of General Motors developed the P-75 Eagle to fill an urgent need for an interceptor early in World War II. The original P-75 design incorporated the most powerful inline engine available and components from other aircraft to expedite production. Flight tests in late 1943 revealed unsatisfactory performance and by the fall of 1944 the Army Air Force had capable escorts, so it cancelled the order for 2,500 P-75As, with only six production eagles being built. I hope you enjoyed this tour of the Air Force Museum's Pursuit Aircraft. If you would like to tour other galleries in this series, you will find convenient links in the description section below this video. 
Here are YouTube suggested links on similar videos that you may enjoy viewing.